Have you been wondering why certain people suddenly disappear from your life? They may have been an essential part of your life, or someone you could hardly do without, but they're gone in the twinkle of an eye. I understand how perplexing it is to see someone all over you one minute, then the next moment they've disappeared into thin air. Don't overthink it. There's always a reason for everything that happens on the earth. So, join me as we explore the scriptural perspective of why God removes people from your life. Before we proceed, consider subscribing to this channel and stay connected for more transformative and impactful videos. Click on the notification bell to receive updates when we upload a new video on our platform. Beloved, God understands the importance of relationships, and most of the time, He brings valuable relationships our way for our benefit. However, sometimes, removes people from our lives for specific reasons. You may not understand why, but be assured that His thoughts towards you are for good and not evil. God wouldn't separate you from someone who is so beneficial to your well-being just because He wants to punish you. For everything He does, there's a reason. And today, we'll unravel seven reasons why God removes people from your life. Number one, when your season changes. I know how difficult this may sound, but some people are unnecessary in every phase of your life. They may not be wrong, but when their mission for your life is accomplished, they must leave so that God can take you to the next level. God told Joshua in Joshua 1, 2, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give to them, the Israelites. Moses was a vital part of Joshua's life, mentoring and tutoring him through all the stages of leadership. Joshua was more of a son to Moses, but at some point, God had to take Moses so that Joshua could enter into God's purpose for his life. God knew that it was Joshua's assignment to lead the children of Israel into the Promised Land, but the more Moses stayed, the more that purpose was delayed. God is not a sentimental being that'll halt his purpose to make you feel comfortable. Moreover, any delay in God's purpose for your life results in a setback in your life and destiny and may affect the destiny of others. So when God takes people away from your life, it will hurt you and you may not enjoy it immediately, but it's for your benefit. In a short while, you'll understand why and even wish it had happened earlier. You must also understand that some relationships may be permanent, but a big part of the people in your life will have to leave you someday. Imagine how close you were with your parents, siblings, that bosom friend at college, and so many other amazing people you've crossed paths with, but now the distance keeps getting. Wider by the day, why? Because you need to grow, and you can't grow when some people still hang around you. The confirmation that you're in a fresh season of your life is the loss of a once quality relationship. Allow them to go, so you can maximize all that God has in stock for you in your new season. Number two, when God wants to prune you to bear more fruits. When God is preparing you to bear more fruits, He prunes people who are no longer supposed to be in your future. Often, God may expect much from you in that ministry, business, or career you're into. He wants the best for you and he knows you have the potential to be better than you already are, but you're not seeing it that way because there's someone in your circle who is being a distraction. That person makes you complacent and suggests that you are already doing well, making you feel there is no need to strive for more. That is why God will take them out so you can see that you can achieve more extraordinary feats. Sometimes they could be like a veil obstructing your view from seeing the future. Let's see what happened in the case of Abraham and Lot in Genesis 13, 14, 15. The Bible says, The Lord said to Abram after Lot had parted from him, Lift your eyes from where you are and look north and south, east and west. All the land that you see, I will give to you and your offspring forever. Abraham had been dwelling in that land for years. 
but had never seen the possibility of owning such a massive portion of the land, because Lot was the veil that prevented him from seeing his realities in God. All Abraham could think of when Lot was around was how he would manage the land dispute between his servant and Lot's servant. But when they separated, Abraham realized that he was even worth more than what he was negotiating with Lot. When some people are removed from your life, God reveals more of what he has called you to do. Some people may block your ears from hearing what God is saying or covering your view from seeing your realities in God. Always discern God's leading in every season of your life and recognize that you're called for a purpose and God is expecting you to bear fruit and fulfill your assignment. It's high time you stopped allowing unprofitable relationships to keep you relegated to a particular spot. You may not know or see it, but don't force a person to stay when God takes them away from you. Number three, when people become toxic or evil. Unfortunately, we don't recognize the evil people in our lives because we don't have what it takes to see beyond the smiling faces they carry all day. However, God sees what you don't see. You may not be seeing your bosom friend's evil intentions towards you, but God has seen it. And in his perfect wisdom, he'll strategize a way of escape for you by separating you from that dangerous friend. Most of the time, you may not feel okay with this arrangement because all you know about this person is that he or she is your very good friend who has been supportive for years. Why should anything come between the two of you? That is the question you'll ask God because you didn't see what he just saved you from. Sometimes God might choose to expose them before taking them out of your way, while other times you may not know why. All you have to do is to trust God's judgment and let them go. Do you know that sometimes you might be aware that you're in a toxic relationship, but won't know how to get out? The children of Israel have been under the torment of their taskmasters in Egypt, but there was nothing they could do about it. They had to endure the pain of that hard labor until they cried out to God for help. And God heard them and came to their aid. In such a case, the separation should be a reason to rejoice and thank God for delivering you from the person who has been the cause of your predicaments. Emotional attachment also tends to prevent our eyes from seeing the toxicity in people, especially in romantic relationships. You can see vividly that this person is not the right person for you because of certain toxic traits they portray. They don't treat you or anyone around you well. You're always tensed when you're around them because you may be committing an offense by talking or keeping quiet. They're abusive. They don't respect you. They add no value to your life. But for some reason, you remain spellbound to them because of your emotional attachment. That is a terrible condition of being in a soul tie with your enemy. At that point, no one else can save you except God, because I know many people must have counseled you concerning that relationship, but you refuse to quit. God, in his infinite mercy, will step in to save you. God can also allow you to go through a toxic relationship with someone because of your stubbornness and insensitivity to signs and instructions. Many people are in bad marriages today not because there was no warning, but because they decided to ignore them. They followed their emotions and were led to a wrong marriage, like a sheep being led to the slaughter. God respects your self-will, and even though he's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of man and knows if a relationship is healthy for you, he won't force you out of your own will. That is why it is vital to stay close to God in prayers and have your mind renewed daily by the word of God so you can be sensitive to instructions and not fall victim to evil and toxic relationships. Number four, when you start depending on people instead of God. When you've decided to idolize some people in your life and you regard them more than God, he will not hesitate to remove them from your life. Our God is jealous and most importantly, he doesn't like to share his space with anyone. So it's either they leave or he leaves. I know you don't want to jeopardize your destiny by giving man the place of God in your life, and you may not even be aware you depend too much on a person, 
so I'll give you a few tips on how to know you're beginning to rely too much on a man. The first sign that you're beginning to depend too much on someone is when you must tell them every good or bad thing that happens to you before anyone else, including God. Sometimes, you may feel down due to one unpleasant circumstance, but don't ever confide in a man before you confide in God. It is always wise to talk to God about it first. Even when you receive good news or are excited about something, the first thing that should at least come out of your mouth should be, thank you, Jesus. Don't. Just pick up your phone, call anybody to tell them the good news before thanking God. It doesn't matter if they're your spouse. God deserves the first place in every aspect of your life. Don't be quick to share your pain or joy with a man when you've not even told God about it. The second sign that you depend too much on man is when you choose to obey their counsel over God's instruction. This sign is common with people who feel God is too slow to respond to their requests. God's instructions are the foundation on which we make all our decisions. But then you have this person you listen to who does not regard God's word. God forbids stealing, but he encourages you to do so when you have the opportunity. You're gradually deviating from God's way because of evil influence, and God will not watch you perish. He'll rescue you from such influence by removing that person from your life. The third way to know you're making someone your idol is when you can easily compromise your faith to please them. When you can lie to be excused from the office so you can run their errands or attend their meeting, you can't even willingly take permission from work to attend a Bible study. This person can make you forfeit all your promises and consecrations to God because of their selfish ambitions. They're gradually becoming your idol. Samson never realized he was giving Delilah the upper hand and making her his idol. He mindlessly followed Delilah's cunning. Request at the expense of God's instructions, and the end was disastrous. No matter the position and authority of a person, you must realize that God is still greater than them. Always choose to obey God, no matter the circumstance. This idol may not always be a human being, but it could also be an object, a source of livelihood, your job or business. It could be a place, a lifestyle, or any other thing that is taking your focus from God. One of the reasons why we can't serve God effectively is the presence of so many distractions, people, things, and places that are taking our attention from Him. You're becoming so attached to some of these things that you believe your life will not have any meaning without them. You can lie at work to get your boss's favor, and you can't even skip a business deal to have some quiet time with God. When you're weak, you draw your strength and help from someone else apart from God. That is a sign that you're idolizing such person, business, or job, and God's way of correcting that error is by detaching you from them. A Bible example of someone who thought his success and victory depended on the number of people by his side was Gideon. God told Gideon in Judges 7, 2, the Lord said to Gideon, You have too many men for me to deliver Midian into their hands, so that Israel may not boast against me that her strength has saved her. Gideon thought his victory against the Midianites depended on the number of soldiers he took to war, but God did not work with many people. He did not intend to give glory to any man or give you any reason to think it was because of someone you succeeded. Do not stop God's miracle because of your over-dependence on man. If God is taking them away, allow them to go. God trains people and lets them do other assignments so you can lean on him. Sometimes, God himself is the one that brought those people your way. But as he sees that those people are helpful to you, he wants to know if you have enough faith to trust him for more of such favor by taking them away. If you're not sensitive to the Spirit, you may believe it's the devil taking away God's blessing from you. But God is taking them away from you so he can see how much you trust him. He gave Isaac to Abraham and still requested that Abraham sacrifice Isaac to him. That is not because he never meant to provide Abraham a son, but because he wants to know if Abraham trusted him enough to know he could give him another Isaac. Don't be too attached 
to anything or anybody. Let your focus be on God alone. Put your confidence in Him alone, and you'll enjoy a lifetime of blessing and peace. Number five, when God is protecting you through rejection. The Bible said in Psalm 118, 22, 23, the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The scripture is talking about Jesus, who the Jews rejected as their savior and later became the chief cornerstone, the one no one can do without, the savior of the universe and the king of heaven and earth. How could he ever get to such a place of honor and splendor without being humiliated and rejected the way he was? The more amazing fact is that God himself orchestrated that rejection to fulfill that purpose for his life. How do you feel when people leave your life without any tangible reason, but with one flimsy excuse or another? You may wonder why they should behave like that after everything you've done for them. You may have sacrificed so much to make their life better, stayed with them in their trying times, and have been a source of help. But suddenly they stopped reaching out, some travel, and no longer care. They didn't even reciprocate any bit of kindness you showed to them. Now, they treat you like trash. Don't worry, the stone the builders rejected will soon become the chief cornerstone. They rejected you so you can be more. If only the Jews had accepted Jesus as their King and Messiah, this gospel of salvation may not have gotten across the whole world. God has a plan to reconcile the whole of humanity to himself. So, he accomplished that plan by allowing the Jews to reject Jesus, not that the Jews would not be saved, but for all races to be partakers of that blessing. What God wants to do in your life is far beyond that person who does not see your worth. Don't worry when God starts using you to touch other people's lives, affecting them positively and creating desirable changes. Those who left you will start running back to you because they've seen your value. They'll be willing to keep you in their company at any length. Don't be afraid of rejection. It is God's way of protecting you from the wrong people and helping you to affect more lives. Number six, God has another plan for the people he removes. Most times, when God separates you from someone, it's not because they're toxic, your season is changing, or you're over depending on them, etc. But because God has other plans for them that do not include you. Everything is not about you. You could also be preventing them from entering their season or restricting the level of their fruit bearing and you need to get pruned from their lives. Put yourself in the shoes of Jethro, Moses' father-in-law. He had every reason to think Moses leaving him after 40 years of being together was unfair, but God had other plans for Moses. As far as God was concerned, Moses' season in Jethro's house was over and he needed to enter his next phase. It doesn't matter what company and relationship they shared, Moses had to leave because God was working on him to improve. Hear Jethro's response. When Moses tells him he is leaving in Exodus 4, 18, then Moses goes back to Jethro, his father-in-law, and says, let me go back to my people in Egypt to see if any of them are still alive. Jethro said, go, and I wish you well. This response may sound very difficult for you to utter as a Christian if you've invested and sacrificed so much for that person. Jethro didn't drag Moses by reminding him of how he took him in when he was a nobody gave him a wife, made him a bow man, and gave him a job and a source of livelihood. He understood that seasons change, and God sent Moses out for a more excellent assignment. This story should teach you if you have people under your authority. It is not a crime if a servant who has been dedicated and committed to his work while under you chooses to go. Don't make them feel like an ingrate or cunningly hold them back in the pretense that God is not leading you to release them, hence blocking their way to God's plan for their lives. Pray for them, release them, and let them go in peace. Count it a privilege to raise, train, and nurture them to become whoever they are. 
God has a purpose for their life as much as he has a purpose for them, and they must also fulfill their purpose. Number seven, God wants to bring someone else. God may take someone so helpful to you away just because he wants to bring someone else who is better than them in every way. Jesus told his disciples in John 16, seven, but I tell you the truth, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I leave, the counselor will not come to you, but if I go, I will send him to you. Counselor Jesus was talking about here is the Holy Spirit. As much as the disciples loved their master, he still had to leave so that the Holy Spirit could come. I'm sure they must have protested against it. The disciples might have told Jesus that they didn't need the Holy Spirit because they did not see anyone better than their master then, but Jesus knew what was best for them. It's not about what you want or how you feel about a person, but what is best for you and only God knows what is best for you. Don't be demoralized when God takes someone so special out of your life. God is making room for something better that'll be to your advantage. Understand that some people are meant to stay with you for a while, while others are there for a lifetime. Jesus' presence with the disciples was temporal, but the Holy Spirit would remain with them forever. Don't hold on to a temporal relationship at the expense of something permanent. Don't be too attached to anybody in life. If God rejected Saul, it means there's a David on the way. There's no need to cry like Samuel did when Saul failed. Don't retreat or relax in your life's assignment because someone left you, but proceed to a higher level. If God wants them to go, let them go. It is for your benefit. I trust that these seven key reasons why God removes people from your life must have opened your eyes to how vital relationships are to God and how committed He is, to detaching you from the wrong ones and attaching you to the right ones. I would like you to be a little reflective right now. Think about all the times God delivered you from wrong associations and all the amazing people He has brought your way in life and thank him for his help you've enjoyed. More so, remember the Bible said in 1 Corinthians 15, 33, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Your association determines your acceleration and assimilation in life. You can't be around the wrong people and end up well. Don't be stubborn when God is leading you to forfeit a relationship. He knows better than you and does it for your good. Remain sensitive to the voice of his direction. You'll never miss it. Finally, the Holy Spirit is the only person you must ensure not to break your relationship with. He's the representative of Jesus on earth and the voice of God that instructs, directs, comforts, teaches, and guides you in everything you do. One way you'll know if God is removing someone from your life, is when they're coming between your relationship with the Holy Spirit. That is a sign that they shouldn't be in your life in the first place. Prioritize your relationship with God above all others, and you'll see success in every other aspect of your life in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Almighty God, I exalt your holy name, for you alone are worthy of my praise. Thank you, Lord, for your love, mercy, faithfulness, kindness, and everything you are to me. Thank you for the gift of life and the privilege to behold a new day impacting and affecting my world in good health and vitality. Your good works are too numerous to mention. I want to say thank you, Father. I'm forever grateful. Dear merciful Father, I humbly confess that I'm a sinner. I plead for your mercy by the precious blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. I ask that you cleanse me from all unrighteousness and make me whole again. Lord, I receive the grace to conquer sin and live according to your will. I subject my body to the Spirit's control and inactivate every power of flesh in me in Jesus' name. 
I decree and declare today that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am blameless, and the devil has nothing in me in Jesus' name. Precious Holy Father, I ask today that you cut off any relationship that is not adding value to my life. Whoever is drawing me back from entering my new season, take them out so I can experience the new level you're ushering me into. Any branch in me that is not yielding fruits, any friend, family, or associate that has become a veil that is covering my potential, remove them and introduce me to my possibilities in Christ Jesus. I disconnect myself from every comfortable but unprofitable relationship in Jesus' name. Faithful Father, I ask that you deliver me from the stronghold of toxic relationships. Take away any physical and emotional taskmaster by your mighty hands. I refuse to be held bound by any destiny-draining relationship that is after my life. Lord, deliver me by your mercy today. I pray you to expose any evil person in my circle pretending to be good. I pray I shall not fall victim to their plot. Give me the spirit of discernment to differentiate those with pure intentions from those with ulterior motives in Jesus' name. Lord God, I pray that you surround me with quality and durable relationships in this phase of my life. Whoever you have prepared to be helpful to me in this season, let them locate me from the north, south, east, and west. Let there be miraculous and strategic connections to fulfill your plans and purpose for my life. Just as Jesus found favor before God and men, I decree and declare favor upon my life. Kings shall come to the brightness of my light. I shall not lack help whenever I need one. I shall not lack the gift of men. Men who will help me grow in the knowledge of God. Men who will help me progress in life and destiny. Men who will bring out the best in me. Men who will be shield and cover. Men who are willing to go the extra mile to see me fulfilling your divine calling upon my life. Bring them my way today in Jesus' name. Thank you, precious Holy Father. I am confident that you have heard and answered my prayers for in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Thank you for watching this video till the end. Do like, comment, and share with your loved ones. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and remain connected for more life-transforming videos. God bless you.